I was diagnosed in October 2002 and I had kidney cancer uh, with a secondary tumour on my fourth vertebrae of my spine. I had um, kidney, which was urology. I had spine, which was neurology. And I had cancer, which was oncology. So I, I was different. I had, to ha I had three consultants. When I was diagnosed, I mean, my consultant, he just sat on the edge of the bed and told me. Now, I would have welcomed perhaps one of my family members being there because obviously you are upset. I mean, when I first came here, I came with my uh, husband and um, we both had a look round because both of us were totally unsure. You know, you think hospice, you know, you're going there to die. Well, it's quite a shock, you know, you, you come in here and it's a little bit of luxury. But th all the staff are so kind, they're all reassuring. And if you have got a problem health-wise, you will be able to see a doctor here. I mean, obviously, a social worker that comes in, so you can, you know, you've got her help as well. Bereavement counselling, anything you want, you know, any sort of counselling, I, I guess you've got access to. Do I need to make a funeral plan? Um, Am I going to be buried? Am I going to be cremated? Uh, someone that you can talk through with it, with it uh, that's independent to your family. Looking back over the last three years, I have a little bit of doubt in my mind about my prognosis and my diagnosis. I, in a way, I felt I've been steamrolled. I've not asked enough questions, and I've learnt myself to find out as much information as I can. But I feel that each consultant looks after his own little bit and then you move on to the next one that looks after his area, and then the next one that looks after his area. None of them actually are working as a team. I'm not frightened of people anymore. I, I try and find out as much information as I can. I've got multiple sclerosis, which was diagnosed 10 years ago that I'd been ill for a number of years and nobody picked it up till I started tripping and falling. I was sent to see a neurologist and they did an MRI scan and it revealed that I had progressive MS. And that was it. We came out the room and he didn't, he didn't explain what multiple sclerosis was. Oh, oh, do I ask? And I asked the nurse on, on the corridor and she said, there isn't an MS nurse. She said, but there's only the one. I mean, I went through a horrendous experience last year where I had a bowel perforation. I asked them if they could help me empty the bags and take it away. And then, then that was left sometimes all day and not emptied. And the smell is horrendous. It is so embarrassing alone without infection. I mean, you go on a and &E when you when you sent in and you you're waiting hours to see your doctor and you're in agony you just want someone to just help with the pain and put you on a comfortable bed instead of left in corridors for hours w without devouse i just don't know where any of us would be because they're absolutely marvelous they can't do enough for you, and the staff's wonderful. It's not just a place to come to die. It's a, it's a place for a lot of things. Whatever's going to be, you're made comfortable and pain-free. And that's something you're not in hospital. If I didn't have this place to come to, well, i tell you what, I will not be here, I mean, I mean that. I would definitely have took my own life. I had pain in my chest when uh, it started and I went to the doctors and they said, oh, he said, you've got a bit of a virus. He gave me antibiotics and it won't get any more better. So I went back. And when I went back, my doctor wasn't available. So I saw another one. He said, oh, I want you to go for an X-ray to a royal infirmary. The lung cancer was actually three quarters of his lung, so it was well advanced. 
He even told me that it was too too big to operate on. Yes, it? because it's attached to your your yeah, iota, yeah. so <coughs> it would only be you know palliative care, you know pain. <coughs> relief from us finding out from that x-ray to the present day we have had a lot of support from hospital and you know dove house uh, we've had a district nurse team come in the information packs we got about the illness what we could read up on and there was people we could contact if we didn't understand what the leaflets was telling us and the support groups uh, we've got a list of all those what we can ring so, and we've, you know, we've been allocated all the times and places of the pain clinics. So it was, uh, it has been very informative. For us as supporting as a family, obviously we know my dad's in here. He's got constant care 24 seven. Us just being able to have, you know, some like quality time with our own family is a big relief. At first we thought the, t t the time scale was very small because of how much pain he was in. I don't mention cancer at all now. I never mentioned it at home. I never mentioned it to my daughters. I, I never talk about it. And that's how I feel at the moment. And that's how I go on. Uh, I don't have a lot of faith in the hospital service. The service. I've had quite a lot of problems over the last two or three years and I found that I was either being messed about or the wets giving me the right information and I had to go for tests. For an example, I take a offering and I had to go for a test three times because nobody thought to tell me that I had to stop taking my wolf from before I could have the test done. And on three trips to Castle Hill, wasted trips to Castle Hill, I wasn't very pleased at all. It didn't register when they said, oh, you've got prostate cancer at first. It didn't register. Then one of the nursing staff in the in the bedded unit said, oh, she said, you know this is terminal, don't you? And it hit me like a, like a thunderbolt. And that's when I started thinking about my future and what I want to do with well I can do it and all the rest of it. I would still like more information about the actual the actual cancer, how far it's spread if it has. People in the hospital, doctors and nursing staff are just too busy to stop and talk. Um, that is a that is a very big difference between the hospitals and here. Well I certainly feel better about the help the assistance I'm getting from the hospice. There's more there's more input, more assistance available that is specialised in cancer, in this hospice. So yeah, you're getting more information because people tend to know more.